Hello geometry folks and welcome to inverse trigonometry. Today we're going to be using trig to help us find an angle inside the triangle. So you need a calculator, a pen or a pencil, and your notes or the foldable that I gave you in class. All right, so let's get started. Your foldable should have on each tab, the first tab should say inverse sine, second is inverse cosine, and the third is inverse tangent. Now, this is what represents what inverse sine means. This is the symbol for inverse sine. This is the symbol for inverse cosine. And this is the symbol for inverse tangent. Now, when I talk about the word inverse, what does the word inverse mean? Well, when we have been using inverses, we have been solving equations and using inverses to help us solve equations. So instead of adding, we would subtract from both sides or instead of multiplying on both sides, we divide on both sides. Well, inverse sine is just, or inverse cosine or inverse tangent are just a way of undoing or canceling the sine operation. So we're going to be using the inverses to help us solve for that angle that we're looking for. Now, on your calculator, you're looking for the sign button. You find the sign button, and usually right above the sign button is the inverse sign button. And in order to use that, you would have to use the second button on your calculator. So locate the second button and the sign button, and that'll help you find the inverse sign. Same with cosine. Um, inverse cosine is usually second cosine and tangent is the same thing. Now just remember that your calculator still needs to be in degree mode. Um, without it being in degree mode, we won't be able to find that degree of that angle that we're looking for. All right, so here we go. We're gonna open up the first tab, inverse sign, and work with that. Now when you look at this picture, it looks a little bit differently than what we have been working with. Before we were given an angle and we were given one side, now it looks like we have two sides. So regular sign helps us find a missing outside piece of the triangle, and inverse sign helps us find an angle. Now this little guy right here, that's just a symbol for an angle. It's called theta, and we are going to use that to determine the ang that angle. So remember, we put ourselves at the angle in which we are finding. And we then, from there, use trig to help us set up our ratio. So if I'm standing at this angle, the 17 is the hypotenuse, the 12 is the opposite. And so I would say the sine of theta is equal to 12 over 17. Now. When we're solving equations, remember we're looking for um, x or the variable. In this case, we're looking for theta. And if we want to isolate that theta alone, we have to get rid of the sine. So in order for us to get rid of sine, we're going to have to do sine inverse on both sides. So theta is equal to sine inverse of 12 over 17. Now remember, sine inverse, you probably want to find your second button, and second sine will get you sine inverse. These two will cancel, leaving us theta alone. And it tells us that that angle is roughly 44.9 degrees. All right, so I'm still using SOHCAHTOA. So remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Um, but in this case, we're going to have to use inverse sine to get that angle that we're looking for. All right, let's do inverse cosine. So we want to find out what angle is between these two sides. If I'm standing right here, then this side is my adjacent side. This guy is my hypotenuse. And I am going to say cosine of theta is equal to adjacent, which is 32 over 35, because remember, cosine is A over H. And so then I need to do inverse cosine on both sides. And therefore, 
theta will equal cosine inverse of 32 divided by 35. And when I type that in my calculator, I get approximately 23.9 degrees. Okay? Let's go on to inverse tangent. Inverse tangent is a tangent is still opposite over adjacent. Okay, TOA, remember? And so we're standing here at angle theta, and the 3 is our adjacent, and 5 is our opposite. And so we are going to say tangent of theta is equal to 5 over 3. In order for me to isolate that theta, I need to do inverse tangent on both sides. Theta is equal to tangent inverse of 5 over 3. Usually that is going to be in parentheses, those ratios. And the calculator gives me 59.04 degrees. All right. So that is us using inverse tangents and inverse cosine and sine to help us find the angle that's missing in our right triangle. Okay? So what if I need to find an angle but I'm not given a picture? So here it says sine of B, so this is the angle I'm looking for, is equal to 0.4848. And so in order for me to find B or isolate B, the function I am using is sine. And in order for me to get rid of sine, I need to do sine inverse on both sides. So B or angle B is going to be equal to sine inverse times 0.4848 and angle B is going to be approximately 29 degrees. Okay, same thing if I have cosine A is equal to 0.6157. I am going to isolate the A, so I need to use inverse cosine on both sides. I will say A is equal to cosine inverse times, or cosine inverse, parentheses, 0.6157, and that will give me angle A, which will be roughly, with the calculator, 52.0 degrees. Okay, so that wraps up inverses for sine, cosine, and tangent. Remember, we are finding the angles with the inverse keys. And with sine, cosine, and tangent, without the inverse, we are looking for a missing side of a right triangle. So they both help us um, find missing parts of a right triangle, and they both find different parts of the right triangle. So um, thank you for taking good notes, and we will see you tomorrow.